Hello, I'm Nate, aka B tier Mutineer, and today I'm going to take you through a list of 10 mods plus 3 bonus ones that I love to use in Dragon Age Origins. I won't mention the mods I consider essential, I've already made a video about those. In this video, I'm talking about mods I like in terms of immersion, improved quality of life, visual enhancements, as well as a bonus final category that I hadn't originally planned on including. I use quite a lot of mods for Dragon Age Origins. For one, because it's an old game that can really benefit from being modded, but another reason is that there is a wonderful modding community that is still active to this day, and I absolutely love finding new mods and seeing what these modders have achieved through their passion and hard work. The fact that so many mods exist and are still being made to this day is not only made possible due to Origins being a beloved game, but also by the Dragon Age toolset that the developers gave us, because it allows modders to see how things work in the base game, and much more easily change things as well as create and implement new content. Without further ado, let's get into the mods. The first category is Immersion. Mods in this category add to my immersion in the game, either in terms of logic within the story or world, or in terms of being visually more immersive. First up, Obsidian's Nobler Noble by Obsidian Warlock. I always found the human noble origin to be a bit weird in terms of immersion and logic. You show up just to talk to your father during a normal day wearing armor and having weapons strapped to your back. That doesn't really make sense seeing as your father, Arl Howe, and all of the other nobles that you can encounter are all dressed in just regular clothing. With this mod, you start the origin with noble clothing, you automatically get equipped with armor and weapons when the attack at night begins, because it makes sense you would dress yourself if your hound is warning you of danger, and you have a higher tier version of the family sword and shield, as well as a new armor set that is based on the one your father looks to wear in a portrait in the hall, and you also get a few pieces of gold. The weapon, shield, and armor are all made of silverite, so they do also have a higher stat requirement. There are some other human noble overhauls out there, but personally I found Obsidian's Nobler Noble to just have the right balance for me, so this is the one I recommend. Next up, Look Your Age by Autistic Romana. It updates the look of Wynn, Arl Eamon, Balin, and Ruck to make them look more appropriate according to their canon age, and in Ruck's case the tainted skin texture since he's a ghoul. I use this mod just for the changes to Wynn, Arl Eamon, and Balin, as it bothered me that such major characters didn't have an appearance that fit their age, but basic game Ruck doesn't bother me much so I don't use the changes for him. There are other mods out there that change Wynn's appearance to make her look less elderly or more like her concept art, as well as mods that do the same for Arl Eamon. However, most of those require all sorts of other mods to function. Look Your Age works with just a base game, so it's perfect for me as I don't like to bother with a million character creation mods. Super big shout out to Autistic Romana for this one. Next, Pants for Women by Shanama. I was really bugged by the fact that there was no commoner clothing for women that included pants. Everything was skirts, and often really ugly skirts too. This mod ports women's outfits with pants from Dragon Age Inquisition. There are three in-game clothing items, and some converted for children too, because in the modder's own words, little girls deserve pants too. I personally used the replacement version outfits to replace some of the base game commoner dresses. Similar to the Pants for Women mod is the Circle Traveling Robes mod also by Shanama. Similarly, they are a port and mashup of the Dragon Age Inquisition mage robes with pants. I always thought the Circle mage robes were very impractical outside the Circle, especially for mages who travel as messengers or do a lot of fighting. There is also a version called Reinforced Robes, which adds a bit of armor to the robes as well as optional room capacity. I believe the room capacity is for Awakening, though I haven't tested the robes in Awakening to see if it works. Next, Neutral Female Armor by Magpie Dragon. I really hate sexualized armor in video games. Why the boob plate? Why the emphasized hips? No thank you. This mod replaces the vanilla meshes for the medium and heavy female armors for all the races with more unisex ones. I've been using this mod for many years, and I highly recommend it if you also don't like sexualized armors. The next category is Quality of Life. Mods in this category make my experience of playing the game more enjoyable, either because there's something I find difficult or annoying in the base game, especially after having played it so many times, or because it just adds something that makes it easier and or pleasant to interact with a certain game system or mechanic. First up, Skip the Fade by HDHD. I think the fade portion of Origins is the worst part of the game by far. Other people complain about the deep roads being too long, but I got stuck in the fade and I had no idea how to continue without using a walkthrough. Afterwards, when I was looking for mods, I found Skip the Fade, and I installed it, 
and I've always used it ever since, and I've never had to do those goddamn nightmare puzzles again. Trust me, if you dread having to play through the fade and it's keeping you from replaying Dragon Age Origins, do yourself a favor and install this mod. Next up, skip the prelude by Omnomnom. This mod helps you skip the Ostagar section of the game without losing out on quests, both main and side quests, codex entries, unique items, etc. I was previously using the Skip Ostagar mod that just gave you some XP gold in the prisoner's key, but this mod is much more comprehensive. Now, why would you use this mod? I use it because I enjoy starting a lot of new playthroughs, going through the origin story and then just doing a few main quests. Due to my ADHD, I often get bored and don't complete most of my playthroughs. However, due to having replayed the game so much, the Ostagar section is really boring, especially because there's not really any relevant choices you make during this portion of the game. So with this mod, you get to choose how you resolve various quests, receive unique items you can get from these areas, and 10 gold to replace the various randomized loot that you could acquire by playing through the Ostagar section. For people who like to start lots of new playthroughs like I do, I highly recommend this mod. Next up, Item Leveler by Chef Bodini slash SmackYou. This mod adds two items to your inventory that have unique effects. Chef Boudini's Item Enchantment GUI takes you into the Rune Enchantment menu so that you can add runes to or remove them from items. This is great if you want to quickly swap your runes but don't want to go all the way back to camp to do it. And Chef Boudini's Item Upgrade Wand upgrades to a higher tier all the upgradable weapons and armor equipped by the user of the wand. Do be aware that any runes must be removed in order for an item to be able to be upgraded to the higher material type. I mainly recommend this mod for the item enchantment GUI because it's quite annoying to have to go back to switch your runes at camp. I would have loved for the vanilla game to have more enchanters in various areas that you can find and use their services, but alas, Sandal is the only enchanter, so I don't feel bad for having a quote unquote cheat mod for rune swapping. The item upgrade wand is not that overpowered in my opinion, since only the basic items in the game are upgradable and you'll only be able to upgrade them if you are at an appropriate level and have the right stats to be able to equip them. Generally, you'll be way more interested in the unique gear for you and your companions, so I don't think upgrading gives you too much of an advantage. The next category is Visual Enhancements. Some of these may have immersive qualities as well, since they make various items, characters, textures, and props in the game look better, but also occasionally have more continuity with later Dragon Age games. I made this category separate from the Immersion category, however, because for me personally, these are not about immersion, they're just about improving the way the game looks. First up, we have Chantry Robes Inquisition Colors Fix by Jove B. This is a fixed version of the Chantry Robes Inquisition Colors original mod by Saint Vec. The original mod had some issues causing visual glitches and took up some extra VRAM and disk space, and this fix by Jove B optimizes everything for performance without loss of resolution. This mod recolors all the Chantry Robes and Origins into the color scheme of red and white from Dragon Age Inquisition, while retaining the design of the robes from Origins. There are other mods out there that are full ports of the Dragon Age 2 or Dragon Age Inquisition Chantry robes, but I find them to look very out of place compared to the rest of the designs of clothes and armors in Origins, so I prefer using the basic model and just recolor it to red and white. Next up, the Theta HD Fix mod, also by Jove B. This is a fix of the original mod Theta HD by Ren, and it fixes some wrong textures as well as getting rid of noise or artifacts from compression or wrong alpha merging. I have no knowledge whatsoever of what any of that means because I'm not a visual artist, but I did very much notice a difference in quality between using the original mod and this fixed version. Finally, I have one more category of mods I want to tell you about, which is mods I literally just discovered a couple of days ago, and I've only had the chance to try them for a few hours, so I can't put them in the other categories yet. I can't give you a fully comprehensive description and review of these mods, but since they made the list, know that I'm already very impressed by what I've seen from them. First is the Dragon Age Origins Unofficial Remaster by Tep Kunset. The Unofficial Remaster updates various models and textures of creatures, items, characters, and pieces of environment to make Dragon Age Origins look less dated while still maintaining the overall style and feel of the game. I only use certain parts of this mod as I have other mods that change appearances of things, as well as the fact that I just don't want all of the changes the mod offers. The great part about this is you can choose what changes you like and delete the ones you don't. You do have to be somewhat knowledgeable about how the game works and which particular files pertain to what, however. But if you are a player who has more extensive experience with modding the game, I do highly recommend using this. It definitely improved the visuals of the game and made me do some double takes at how pretty things can look even with the limitations of modding a game from 2009. Next are two mods by a Singular Creator, Shiny Weapons and Armor, and Shiny Props by Average Dilf Lover. 
With the shiny weapons and armor mod, you can make various pieces of armor, weapons, creatures, shiny, similar to how shiny surfaces and materials look like in Inquisition. I like using this in combination with the shiny props mod by the same creator, because this mod not only makes shiny what should be shiny, but also makes various items made out of cloth and wood not shiny. I've said shiny so much that I've lost the meaning of the word, but trust me when I say that these two mods improve the look of the game a lot, especially if you combine them with the Theta HD and the unofficial remaster mods. Finally, we have Return to Ferelden, Ferelden Revision by Hollowness Devoured, which is an extremely extensive mod. It can do everything from adding ambient NPCs, placeable herbs and containers to various areas, to changing companion and NPC appearances and equipment, as well as replacing some equipment models, and finally adding new areas such as the Amaranthian area within the Origins campaign, a day and night mode for Denerim inspired by the day and night mode in Kirkwall and Dragon Age 2, some weather changes at the Lake Kalanhad, and so on. It truly is a huge mod that took me a very long time to customize to my liking, and I'm honestly still figuring out exactly what I want to use from it, but even just using some of these elements has been amazing. I am very impressed with how big this mod is and with everything that it can achieve. This is also one of those mods that you need to have quite a lot of experience in order to use well, because you do need to understand how the game and game files work, and be aware of what exactly you personally want to get out of it. These were the 10 mods plus 3 unexpected bonus mods that I like using in Dragon Age Origins. These aren't essential in order to be able to make the game playable or less buggy or anything like that, but they are very much improving my experience of playing the game to such an extent that I keep replaying it very frequently. For now, I hope you enjoyed this look into 13 really good Dragon Age Origins mods. If you're looking forward to seeing more of my Dragon Age videos as well as occasionally some videos on other RPGs, do remember to subscribe and leave a like and comment while you're at it too. Every little thing helps. This has been B-Tier Mutineer. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.